Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial that's going to show you how to port a player model into Tower Unite. Hopefully it's going to be simple enough for you guys to follow along, and concise enough so you don't really get lost along the way and don't run into any problems. First things first, you're going to need Blender version 2.8 or higher. I'm using, two, I'm using version 3.2.2. Uh, the reason for that being is you're going to need an add-on that only supports those versions and also because the UI is a little bit nicer. Uh, the add-on in question is the Tower Unite Blender add-on or Tower Unite Suite. And what that's going to do for us is really streamline the process and make things a lot easier for us to actually get this model into Tower Unite. And it has a little bit of uh, neat features that will make that a lot easier. All right, with the Blender requirements out of the way, let's talk about the model. First, your model should already be rigged. And what that means is that it has a skeleton or armature already assigned to it, and it has weights that control the model so that it will move around properly. If your model isn't already rigged in this way, um, there's a few things you can do. First, you can either try to rig it yourself if you have the know-how. Secondly, you can get someone else to rig it for you. Uh, third, if you got your model from like a model's resource, uh, try and find the one that has an armature if it is available. And your fourth option is, which I don't really recommend, is you can try automatically weighting it either with Blender's uh, auto weight or Adobe's, which I forget the name of. A uh, reason I don't recommend that is it's not perfect and most of the time it will not work at all. In the times that it does work, it will still require a lot of manual adjustment, so I don't really recommend it unless you really want to take the risk uh, and have to deal with stuff like that. Okay, with the model being rigged out of the way, there's a few other things you need to take into account. First is the vertex count or vertice count. Tari Knight has a vertex limit of 30k vertices, so your model should be lower than that value. The farther away you are, the better. You can see ours is about 11k vertices, which is perfect. And also, Tari Knight has a materials limit for your model. So if we click the model, go here into the materials tab. Uh, there is a limit of 10 or less. Again, the lower, the better. If you have more than 10, what you can do is you can get an add-on for Blender called the Material Combiner, and then it will allow you to combine all your materials into one so that you can circumvent that. Uh, less materials, the better. And uh, next thing you want to keep in mind is make sure your project's unit scale is set to 1.0. And how you would do that is you would go up here, click this little arrow, and make sure scale is set to 1.0. You don't really want to change that. It can mess up some stuff. Better to be at 1.0. No, really, no real reason to change that. And then that should be it for now. So now with that uh, requirements and stuff out of the way, we can actually get into setting up the model for Tower Unite. First things first, we're going to talk about the material since I already have it here. And uh, for Tower Unite models, um, all materials have to be set to principled BSDF mode for the surface. And for their base color, they have to be using an image texture linked to an image. Uh, image texture is just whatever image you have. It could be PNG or anything else, really. I recommend PNG. And this, this will have all the textures that your model is actually going to use. So this is how you're going to have to set up all your materials. Uh, these materials can also have, if your model has them, normal maps, which are set up down here, if they have them. And uh, the Blender, uh, the Tower Unite add-on is going to be able to export that, and it will show up in Tower Unite just fine. For materials that have special properties, like, for example, if your character has armor and you have like metallic set to whatever, um, oops, I have the wrong material selected, so that's why it's not showing up. If you have it set to whatever, um, you can just forget those values for now. Tari Knight has equivalents that you will set up later when the model is actually imported into the game. So stuff like that you don't have to worry about uh, for now, just keep it in mind. Let me actually set that back to normal. Keep that in mind for later. And uh, yeah, that, that about does it for the materials. Um, now we're going to have to remove some extra features that Tari Knight doesn't support. And one of the primary features is shape keys or face posing, if you're more familiar with Gmod face posing. So we're going to get rid of those. If you go into this tab right here, the object data properties with the model selected, you're going to be able to see all the shape keys in this menu here. See if I select one of these, it'll change it around and stuff like that. Tire Knight doesn't support those. So what you're going to want to do is have the basis selected, which should be the baseline. Go into this little menu here and then click delete all shape keys, and then we're good there. No more shape keys to have to worry about. In addition to getting rid of shape keys since those aren't supported, I recommend that you also delete any parts of your model that aren't going to be visible from the outside. So anything that's not really visible from outside of the model, you should really delete. For this model in particular, there's a few things in the head, which were for the shape keys you can see right here, that I'm going to just delete really quickly. You're going to want to go into edit mode for stuff like this. I have an extra setting here. Let me turn it off. There we go. 
And you're just going to want to delete these. So I have face selection mode already enabled up here. I'm just going to be deleting these real quick. Um, you can just uh, very quickly shift click to s click multiple things, then control L to like select anything that's related. And then you would just delete these faces and stuff like that. Uh, you would have to do that on your own. It's going to differ depending on your model. Um, just make sure you do it properly. And once you do that, nothing on the outside is missing that you would actually want visible. All right, with that out of the way, now we can actually get to porting the model to Tower Unite so that you know you can get it into Tower Unite. So all that pre-planning stuff is done for now. All right then, first things first, we're going to have to scale up our model to the Tower Unite armature. And the thing is you have to match the Tower Unite armature uh, pretty close as you can because that's what the game is going to be looking at. First things first, let's actually get the armature in. So to do that in object mode, we're going to go to Add, then Armature, and then Tower Unite Armature. If this is invisible, that probably means you don't have the add-on installed properly. So make sure you do, and that it's enabled. And uh, then this will show up. So let's click this. We're going to leave all the settings in this menu to default for now. I recommend you do that. You're going to hit OK. And for now, we're also going to be leaving all the settings in this to default. I will explain them later. So now that you've done that, you might be wondering, well, where exactly is the Tower Unite Armature? Well, if you zoom out, <laughs> you'll see that it's very, very, very big. And this is actually the size of the armature that the game is going to look at. So your model is going to have to accommodate this and not the other way around. You should not really be moving these bones outside of what the add-on menu can do for you. So let's get our model scaled up properly. We're going to go back into object mode. We don't really need to work with that right now. We're going to select the parts of our model we want to scale up with shift click. And then we're going to go to scale and then we're going to scale this up. So you can see kind of um, what the scaling does is it's going to scale kind of relative to where the object's origin or center is. Um, I think on this model, it's set up a little bit uh, weirdly. So what I'm going to do is with these two selected, I'm just going to go into set origin to 3D cursor because that's at the bottom or the floor. And then that's just going to make it a lot easier. You probably don't have to do that, but if you notice it's scaling a little weird, you can either do that or just kind of scale it and then reposition it properly later. So I'm just going to scale it up right now using only the outside ring. And make sure that uh, generally you want the shoulders to match in height and position. Uh, and I think this is actually a good spot. So I'm going to leave it at that. So once you do that, you're going to want to make sure you still have everything selected. And then you're going to go into Object, Apply, and click All Transform so that you actually what you see is actually what it's at when we continue working. All right. So now that we have it aligned, there's still a little bit more we need to do before we actually get to the Tarnet armature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete it and I'm going to remake it later. If you want, you can also just hide it and then continue from there. But personally, I like deleting it just so it's out of the way. And yeah. So next thing we're going to do is, and I highly recommend you do this. If you have finger bones for your model, I really recommend you pose them in a way so that you're hands are making a fist and then you just rig uh, your model's uh, hand completely to the hand bone. And the reason for that being is Tari Knight's finger bones are very finicky and not that great. Uh, they will more often than not look very janky. Uh, so it's just kind of easier to have all your fingers just rigged to the fist. So before you, before I do that, we're going to want to go into pose mode and then make sure that you know we make it look kind of like a fist. Um, if your model supports it and, and the bones are named in a way, you can also turn on uh, enable the X mirror. So if you move it on this side, it will move it on the other side just so it's a little bit faster. So real quick, I'm just going to uh, uh, position these in such a way. I'm actually going to hold Alt and get my view to look like this so it's a little bit straighter. So I'm just going to do this really quickly. Don't really mind it making it look that bad. This is for the sake of the tutorial. And then if you, just a few more. All right. And you can see with the X mirror enabled, it did it on the other side. Very simple. I really recommend you do this if your model has fingers. Uh, don't re don't try really rigging it to the Tari Knight finger bones because they're not that great. Okay. With that done, now we can uh, get rid of our old uh, a skeleton that's on the model and one of the easiest way to do this just so you don't mess up anything is you can go into this menu here the modifier properties and if you have something like this 
what you can do is just hit apply and then that will remove the link and also if you made any changes in pose mode like we did it will save those changes to the actual model um, then you can uh, with that done then you can just kind of delete the old uh, skeleton if deleting the skeleton does anything weird like making it suddenly small again or anything like that chances are that probably means it's parented which you would be able to see in this menu if you have the model selected you would be able to see oh it's parented to the bone or to the armature rather. Um, one thing you can do to get rid of that is uh, you would right click on the model, go to parent and then clear and keep transformations. This is going to make sure your model stays the exact same as where we left it and it'll remove that link and make it a little bit safer to delete that, which we are going to do now that I just did that. Alrighty, now we're going to get the Tari Knight armature back in here. If you hit it, you would just unhide it. I deleted it, so I'm just going to respawn it. You can just do that here. And it actually gives me a chance to explain the next menu. This menu, again, leave everything to default. This is probably the best idea. All right, now this menu actually lets you adjust the rig in a safe way, as, at least as safe as it can get, because if you move the bones any other way, um, Tari Knight will force them back to their old positions. So these are kind of really the only ways you can change them just to make rigging it a little bit easier and so you have as little problems as possible. So these two values, shoulder width and shoulder position, are actually values in Tari Unite. So when you have it imported, you would need to set them back to the same values as you used here. Uh, shoulder width controls how far away or how close apart your shoulders are. For us, zero is perfectly fine. Shoulder position determines how high or low it is, so you can lower it if you need to. Zero, again, is fine for us. Now these two settings, I'm going to explain one at a time. Raised arms dictates like the angle at which your arms are like raised or lowered. This really helps if, for, if your model isn't in a perfect T-pose like this one. You can lower the value to make it match closer, so which I'm going to lower to like, I think that's fine. As close as you can get it, really. And then the arm length, I don't really recommend you change this because there's no really equivalent in Tatari Knight. It just kind of makes or shrinks your arms. Uh, we're going to leave this at 100% because that's what I recommend. I really don't recommend you change that. Um, all right, with those values explained, then you hit OK, and your uh, skeleton is set up here. If you ever need to change that in the future, you don't really need to delete it and redo it. What you can do is in edit mode with the skeleton selected, you can go up into here, armature, tire knight rig, adjust, and it'll pop up that menu for you again so you can adjust it as you like. So I'm just going to set that back to 40% or whatever. Whatever looks good. All right. Next step is now we're going to have to actually set up the model with the tire unite skeleton. And the first step is if it doesn't already do it for you, you go into object mode, select your model go into the modifier menu, and then we're going to want to add an armature modifier and make sure it's set to the Tarina armature, which is going to be named exactly armature. Make sure that it is exactly named that. Uh, that's what the add-on looks for when you export, and that's what Tari Knight looks for when you import it into Tari Knight. So don't change that around. Make sure it's named armature, and you should be good to go there. Now, you can see that just doing this isn't enough uh, to actually make it ready to go. If I go into pose mode, for example, and move around a bone, you can see it's not actually moving anything. Now, why is that? Well, that's because the vertex groups on our model, we actually forgot to rename to the uh, bone names of the Tari Knight armature. And that's actually how models are controlled. Uh, when you have weights on a model, it assigns it to the vertex group, which matches the name of the related bone. So one of the ways we can, well, actually, the only way you should be able to rig this to the Tari Knight armature is just renaming the vertex groups to match the bone names in the armature here. So you can unfold this menu up here so you can actually see all the bones and stuff like that. We got the clavicles, we have arm bones, stuff like that. And you're going to want to be renaming all of these vertex groups to match. So I'm just going to go along and do it for this model. Just keep in mind, your vertex groups might be named a little differently. It might be a little bit of a different structure. This is specific to this model, so you're just going to have to reference the model you have and make your uh, best guess, best educated guess on how you're going to match it. But it should be pretty straightforward. For example, Tari Knight Armature has a pelvis, so we're going to rename this vertex group to just pelvis. And it is, I believe, case sensitive, so just be sure you're keeping that in mind. And if it isn't, well, it doesn't hurt to be uh, exact. So we're just going to be renaming all these bones. So left leg on our model is going to correlate to thigh L. We're going to actually unfold this just so we have it. So then we start renaming this to thigh L. Then calf L is going to be our left knee, so that's going to be calf L. Left foot is going to be foot L. And then ball is if you have a toe bone or toe vertex group. We don't have that, so we're going to ignore that. 
and we're just going to do the right leg as well. So it's going to right leg is going to become thigh r. Uh, right knee is going to become calf r. You can actually double check to see. Uh, you can see it's kind of following in a nice convention here. Then right foot is going to become foot r, and then no toe bone, so we're going to ignore that. And if you actually want to sanity check your work as you're going along with this, there's two things you can do to actually check. You can select your skeleton, go into pose mode, and then just kind of click a bone and then move it around, see what moves with it. You can see it's kind of moving stuff around here. So, so far so good. It's actually starting to control the model. There's also another thing you can do, which I will show you later. Uh, I'll just show you how to do it though. Is you can go into the pose menu here, come down to Tower Unite Rig, preview pose, and then there's a bunch of menu options here that lets you actually preview uh, animations that are actually used in Tower Unite, like walking forward, running, sitting down, any other stuff. There's also a few extra ones here if you feel like checking those out. We'll just see what it looks like right now actually. You can see it's going to be replicating the idle animation and you can see what moves and what doesn't. And then you hit OK to close that menu. Um, if you ever want to reset your pose back to normal, I recommend you click on a bone, press A, go into Pose, Clear Transform, and All. This is probably the safest way to do it just so you match the original positioning uh, as you set it up in the menu. All right then, so we're just gonna go along and rename all of the vertex groups to match the Tarionite armature. Um, one second. I got a little thirsty. <laughs> um, one thing you might notice is that the armature here has multiple spine bones, three. And for our original model, we only had two, spine and chest. Um, if you ever run into anything like that, uh, don't. Don't worry about not using every single bone that's in the Tower Unite armature. Just uh, use whatever you need to make it look good and make uh, the whole model actually move along. So for us, this is going to be spine is going to become spine 01, and then chest is going to become spine 02. And then we don't have a we don't have an equivalent for spine 03, so we can just kind of leave that alone. And if you're really worried about it, once again, you can go back into pose mode and move these around. See if it moves around how you like you know, for for those specific bones, because they're not done yet, so it's not gonna look <laughs> it's not gonna look great. Alrighty then, we're going to move on and do the rest of the vertex groups. So we have right shoulder, right arm, blah blah blah. Right shoulder bones are usually gonna cor correlate to the clavicles. So right shoulder becomes clavicle R. Let's just unfold this so we can see everything in here. Right arm is gonna become upper arm R. Right elbow is gonna become lower arm R. Then right wrist is going to become hand R. And the same goes for the other uh, set of arms, which is for us is uh, all the way down here. This is left shoulder is going to become cla clavicle L. Left arm is going to become upper arm L. Left elbow is going to become a lower arm L. Left wrist is going to become hand L. Alrighty, and then um, the last vertex groups we're going to have to actually rename are going to be the head and neck. So let's just do that real quick. So for our neck, is going to become neck underscore 01. Head is just going to become lowercase head. And then if you go into pose mode now, and we're going to use the menu actually to do idle, you can see that most parts in the model are actually already read, already moving with it. So that's that's a good sign. Now we're going to talk about some extra features of that might be on your old model that don't really have any matching bones. So let me actually reset this real quick before we talk about that. Back into pose mode and go into vertex groups. Now you might notice that there's a lot of extra vertex groups here that I didn't rename. For example, all the finger vertex groups, uh, stuff like feather, stuff like hair. If your model has any extra bits like that that used to belong to bones that individually controls those bits, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to match those vertex groups to the closest bone um, that's nearby, or really the bone that will make it look good. For example, uh, the feather vertex groups for this model uh, uh, are related to the feathers on top of the head. So what you would do is you can uh, delete these vertex groups or get rid of them in a way that you set this part of the model up to the head bone. So I'll actually show you one of the ways to do that specific to the feathers. So one thing you can do if you feel like you want to, you can actually just delete these vertex groups by pressing this minus button here. And then now they don't have any vertex groups at all. Since the feathers are kind of just, there's nothing really else in the way, the closest thing is the head. It's a little bit easier for us. What you can do is you can select the skeleton, then the model, 
uh, or even actually, there's a better way to do that. You can go into edit mode, and then you can just kind of select the parts you want. So I'm going to select the feathers here, and then I'm going to now go into weight paint mode, and we're going to have to turn on this setting up here so that we actually select everything that we got here. And then I'm just going to use this menu here to assign these selected parts to the head bone like this. Now you can see it's all colored in, and when you move the head bone around, you will notice that it's actually going to be following along. Uh, there are a few other ways, there are a few other parts that I'm going to do similarly. There is a few hair parts that I'm going to do. Um, we will just go over that uh, as we go along. Actually, I'll just do it in this menu, see how it goes. So you can see there's like this extra, there's these extra bits here. Um, one thing you can do actually is you can, oh no, that's not, that's not exactly what I want to do. Now nah, ignore that. Uh, all right. So one thing we can do actually is if you want to be a little bit safer with stuff like this, since I noticed it's actually a lot more complicated than that, what you can do is you can use a modifier called uh, vertex weight mix. And what that allows you to do is mix vertex groups together. In this case, we're going to be adding them together really. So we're going to create a vertex mix modifier and I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, how you use this. So we're going to want to get all our hair bones, our hair vertex groups rigged to the head because that's, you know, what's going to look good, I think. So we're going to select the target um, vertex group for us is going to be head. And then we're going to select, uh, we're going to have to do this for every single vertex group we want to transfer over the data to. So for example, hair is going to be set to head. So you go, you would set the target, then set what you want to actually transfer over. Then to vertex set, you're going to set this to group B and then set this to add. If you want to double check your work, you can go into weight paint mode and then make sure you have the target selected. And then you can see with our modifier settings like that, you can see that it actually starts coloring it in. So if I pick a different thing, you see it'll start coloring it in red. So you're going to kind of have to do this for every single instance. Um, I'll just go ahead and make it a little bit easier on myself and just uh, I'll just show you how to do it for this and then I'll do it how I prefer to do it. So we're going to hit apply and then it'll move everything over and then you can safely delete the vertex group that you just uh, mixed into the other one. So I'm not going to do it that way because that's to me that's going to take quite a long time. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to delete all these extra hair vertices and then I'm going to manually go into edit mode here and just kind of make sure I select all the hair bits that I really want set up to the head and stuff. That seems to be all of it. And then I will go into this menu here and just click assign. And then once you do that, it should just be all set up already like that. And to me, that's a little bit uh, easier uh, for things like that anyway. All right, now let's do that for the fingers because that's gonna be a little bit trickier. You can also, you can, for the fingers, you can do it the same way. You can use the vertex mix, weight mix modifier if you feel like going through every single one. Or if you want, you can go into edit mode. Just make sure you kind of have all of the fingers selected. We're going to actually see if there's a smarter way for me to do that without selecting the whole wrist there because I don't want to do that. Uh, I think we lucked out with this model. This is actually perfect. So with all of that selected, I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier. This is, I believe, the right hand, so I'm going to select hand R, hit assign, and then we can go out of edit mode and delete all of those, oops, one, one too many, all of those vertex groups there that were for the fingers. We can actually double check our work here. Oops. You can see now it's actually moving all of those fingers how we want it. And then we're going to go back into edit mode and do that for the other side. So I'm just going to save this while I do this again. Uh, I happen to luck out here with how it's selecting the hand, which is exactly how I wanted to select. You might not be so lucky. So if you want to just do it as carefully as you can, or if you'd rather not take the risk, you can do the vertex weight mix modifier, whichever is uh, whichever you prefer. Um, to me, this is just faster. So for the sake of demonstration, I'm just going to do it. So now that I have all those selected, I hit assign to the vertex group I want them to be assigned to. Go back into object mode. We delete all these extra bits. And then also I forgot to delete these extra hair bits. And then that should about cover all of the extra parts of your model that had their own unique bones, um, which you're going to have to carry over. So now 
if we select the skeleton once more and go into pose mode, we're going to go into this menu again. We should see that it's actually starting to follow along very nicely. Um, you can actually demonstrate a few more just to see if you if it's to your liking. You can do relax, you can do laid back, where it's lying down on the ground like the emote you can see right here. Looks pretty dang good to me. Okay, so this is a great way to really verify that everything looks good. You definitely want to make sure that everything is weighted to a vertex group or end bone. Anything that's not unweighted is going to show up very strangely in Tower Unite. Uh, so really just make sure all the parts you want uh, are weighted and all parts of the model are weighted. You can even see you can make him, uh, make the model do a little bit of a Naruto run here, <laughs> which is a, not in the game, but it's a neat little uh, joke there. So I'm going to reset this. All right, with that said, we're pretty much ready to go to actually get this into Tower Unite. Now, before we actually export this, I highly, highly, highly recommend in pose mode that you set the transform, you reset the transforms. If you have a pose set and you export it like that, I believe in older versions of the add-on, there was a bug that made it import a little weirdly. I'm not sure if that was fixed or not, but better safe than sorry. Just make sure your pose is set back to normal. Alrighty. Now let's get this into Tower Unite. So we're going to go into File, Export, and you're going to go down here to where it says Tower Unite DAE. You might notice there's another option up here, but this one kind of accounts for the normal map bug, so you can actually have normal maps work. And this has a few features that will help us get the model into Tower Unite. So you would name it however you want. Uh, and let's go over these uh, settings here. Triangulate is going to turn any uh, rectangles or any other shapes like that that make up your model into triangles. I personally recommend that you enable this because otherwise Tower Unite is going to do it for you. And you can see right here it says it's a good idea to toggle it on if there are like holes in your model when you import it into Tower Unite. So this is just a, generally I recommend you turn this on. If it looks weird when you import it then you can turn it off. Copy textures is going to copy the textures that you have linked to your model into the output folder because that's what Tari Knight's going to look for when it's looking for the image textures. It's going to search the same folder, not anything else. So this is really just recommended to have uh, turned on. Archive instead of overwriting will specifically pertain to if you're going to be exporting it over and over. So if you have this on, it's going to be backing up any old exports. If you have it off, it'll just be overwriting the file like normal. Export log debug is for one of the it's for the newer versions of the add-on, which you might not have at the time of this video. Um, this will create a log detailing anything that happens while it exports, anything bad, anything good, and so on. Magic export, I recommend you leave this on and kind of just have everything set to default. These are sort of extra settings that uh, us personally, uh, well, ignore hidden meshes and purchase response are just good. You leave these on. You should leave those on. And this is kind of an extra setting if you want to have the uh, add-on do any reweighting for you. Um, for us, we're just going to leave these untouched and just kind of leave those alone. But I recommend you have Magic Export enabled with these two checked. It'll uh, get, it'll hopefully uh, block any sort of problems we have. So we're going to just hit Export with all these settings enabled. And then that should be the model exported. So I will see you over at Tower Unite to show you how it looks when we import it. Hey there, now we're in Tower Unite. All right. We have our model exported, all set up, and ready to go, and ready to put into Tower Unite. So to do that, we're going to go over here to the Workshop Editor, and when you click on that, it will bring you to the Workshop Editor. And this is how you actually set up importing stuff and stuff like that. There's two tabs here, there's My Uploads and My Imports. My Uploads will already show stuff that you have uploaded already, and you are assigned as an author to. We're going we're gonna to need to really worry about that, chances are you probably won't have anything here. So we're going to go into the My Imports tab and we're going to import the model we just made. So we're going to click Import and it's going to pop up this little dialog window. For us, we're exactly right where we want. I kind of set this up beforehand. This is the model we want to import. You're going to click Open and then it will be imported. So we happen to get lucky with how we did it. <laughs> it looks already really great. You can check the compile info here to see uh, any uh, specific details and stuff. If you ever run into any problems, sometimes this is useful info to have. It'll usually show where things went wrong, or it'll show any errors up here, say anything like that, and any other stuff like that. Alrighty then, with that out of the way, now you can actually start setting up your model for Tiger Unite specific stuff, like how accessories are going to look on the model and other things. 
Firstly, we're going to just cover the material metadata here. So you're going to open this menu and you will see all the materials we have linked. I actually forgot to delete these excess materials that we don't really need anymore. So uh, just <laughs> keep that in mind if you have anything that's unused. Uh, for this purpose of this tutorial, it doesn't really matter. It's fine. Uh, all right. So specific to this model, uh, actually, no, before that, these are the settings that I was talking about earlier for special properties that I said you can kind of ignore for now. This is where you would set it in the game. So if your texture has emissive, which is glowing, roughness, which determines how rough it looks with the specular or metallic, and then also metallic and specular. So changing these values will uh, change the strength of the effect. So you can see metallic one makes it look very metallic. Specular one makes it shiny. And if you have specular and roughness, it'll like kind of rough out the shininess a little bit. Stuff like that. If your materials have any of those sort of settings, you can kind of replicate it here. For us, our material two, which is the um, white eyes here, uh, actually glow in the dark from the source which this character is from. So we're gonna actually raise this value. And raising that value will make those glow in the dark. And you can actually kind of see that if I turn it nighttime here and turn the light low, you can see that it's starting to glow in the dark here. I'm gonna set it to 10 just because I want it to be as bright as possible. And you can kind of do that for any sort of thing you really want. Uh, set it to however you think it looks good and then you would hit save metadata here and then that will be saved locally. All right, with the material stuff out of the way. Well, actually, one more thing. There's also this option here for a tune shader. If you turn it on, it'll disable some of these properties but also like do a little kind of shading effect here. If you think it looks good, you can have it on. If you don't think it looks good, leave it off. Usually it doesn't look that great. For this model, it looks pretty good, but we're gonna leave that off for now. And also, if you have any materials with transparency, this is where you would set these. Now, the modes, I'm just kinda gonna explain really briefly. Translucent usually means you have, um, actually, I need to remind myself. <laughs> Translucent is, okay, here we go. Translucent is usually for partially see-through stuff, like glass. Uh, if you set it to that, it's going to disable shading completely and kind of use the alpha channel of your texture to determine how it's going to look. You can see for this, it looks pretty weird, but that's because our texture is not really set up for that. So we're going to just leave that to none. And then mask sort of does the same thing, but it takes into sh it takes shading into account. It uh, doesn't have any weird uh, transparency bugs, which you might encounter if you use translucent. But also it only takes into account either fully transparent or or not transparent. So this is specific to your material. Uh, for us, it doesn't really matter. But if you are aware of what your model uses, then keep that in mind. But for the purpose of this, not really important. I'm going to set it to none. All right, that's the material stuff out of the way. Now we're going to go into the player metadata. And this controls stuff like player height. So if you want your model to be shorter or at the default size, this is how you would do it. And this also controls uh, the offsets of uh, wearable items like hats and stuff like that. So this is how you actually adjust it to look um, as good as possible with your model. I'm probably not going to go through all of these because this is really up to personal preference, but we're just going to go through a few. So let's do the hat one. So when you start editing this, you have three settings here. It's exactly like in your condo when you're placing a furniture, position, rotation, and scale. I'm going to just quickly position this in a way to make it look good. And there are actually some settings here you can do if you want to like move around your camera when you hit the movement keys then you can start moving around like this. If you don't want that, uh, I believe you, uh, what is the key? You hit R and then it'll bring you back to normal. So let's just get this hat set up. I'm going to move it maybe like here. Um, I'm not really going to go too in depth with this because it's again up to personal preference. And then let's see, let's actually set this up a little bit. So I'll put the hat here, maybe rotate it a little bit so that it looks a little nicer. And then I think the scale is fine just to demonstrate. And then there's also a lock for scale if you want to have it scale uniformly or non-uniformly like this. But uh, I'll just leave it at the defaults for now. I think that's fine. And then I will go into a few others. I'll go into the more specific ones actually. Weapon is a little bit more unique in that it is specific to weapons that your character holds. So what is a, a useful animation thing you can set it to is pistol. So you can see how it's being held here and you can kind of set that up however you want. This part doesn't really need that much explanation. It's pretty self-explanatory. 
And as f for these values, this is exactly how it is in Blender if you actually use those. So this would dictate how far apart your shoulders are or how low they are. But for us, zero, zero is fine. So we don't need to worry about that. And in the editor, you can actually preview some animations as well. You can see how stuff looks. Uh, see how everything looks. See if you like it, if you don't like it. If you don't like it, you can go back into Blender and adjust it in a way that will make you like it. For me, I'm probably just going to set this to like about 80. I'm not really going to mess with these values too much. For the most part, they should be okay. Maybe just the hat and glasses I will adjust. I'll leave the hat like that. And then I will leave, I will adjust the glasses to how I like them. So let's do it. Why not? Pretty much at the end part of the tutorial anyway. Don't mind showing off this. So this stuff is really self-explanatory. It's exactly like your condo, like I said earlier. You would just position it in a way that you think looks good. So um, I think uh, if I raise that a little bit and bring that out a bit, maybe make the scale a little bit smaller. Um, Yeah, I would say this is okay. Let me raise it a little bit and bring it out. Yeah, I would say this is good. Um, one thing to keep in mind for doing these offsets is not every item is going to look the exact same. Uh, and this is something I've brought up, but just kind of keep that in mind for now at, at the current time of this video. Not every item will look exactly the same when you set up these offsets. So if it happens to look um, bad for any items you like, you can either try adjusting it a little bit more or really just kind of have to wait until a feature like per item offsets is implemented uh, or anything like that to let you further refine that. So just keep that in mind. It's not going to be perfect, but close as you can get is going to be great. So I think this is fine. Uh, this is for the pet floating stuff. Yeah, these are all pretty self-explanatory. Um, I believe all of these should be okay. The pack is uh, usually good for me, I've noticed. All right then, then once you're done with all that, you hit save metadata. And now we're at the point where we're ready to actually upload the model. So once you have that, you have it selected, you have it loaded in, stuff like that, you're happy with everything. You hit upload and it'll bring up this menu, which will actually let you upload it to the Steam Workshop. So let's explain this. So since we're importing a player model, it's going to be automatically set the player model. You would set the title. You would set a description if you so choose to do it right now. You can also do it later. You can set tags for your model to kind of match it closely to whatever category it relates to. And then if you check agree and publish down here, it's going to make your model public. If you don't check it, it's going to upload it privately. So just kind of keep that in mind. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little tutorial. It's going to give it a brief title. And then we're going to set an image here. Um, I believe we'll just use, we'll just use that image. Why not? And he set an image here as an icon. And then we're going to say this is for a tutorial. And then we're going to set some tags here. I'm going to set video games fandom because that's what it's from. And I'm going to leave this unchecked just to show you that it'll upload privately. If you check it, it'll upload publicly. So let's hit upload. And then it's going to upload it to the Steam Workshop for us. And just kind of give it some time. And if you're lucky, upload successful, then you can view it in the workshop. That's, uh, ooh, this button's being a little finicky. There we go. And now you can see that it's actually uploaded to the workshop and looks good. One thing you should keep in mind, if you run into any errors or anything like that, just double check that the file size isn't zero. If it's zero, that means something probably went wrong. Uh, just try re-uploading it by updating it here. Uh, and hopefully that should sort that out. So with that said and done, I'm going to favorite this so it's going to be easier to find. Uh, we can leave it hidden for now, but if you want, you can change the visibility to either friends only, meaning that only friends will be able to see your model. Anybody else will just see the default. Public, which means anyone can see it and anyone can find it. And unlisted, which means anyone can see it, but it won't show up on the workshop page. Uh, they'll have to get it from you in the scoreboard. Uh, I usually like using public or unlisted. If it's like a little bit of a private model, I set it to unlisted, which is what we're just going to do just for example. So now it's unlisted. All right, I have it favorited. Now we're going to actually see the model in action. I don't even know where it went here. Oh, there it is. All right, we're going to return back to the menu and let's go into the appearance menu. You can see I have this one selected already. We're going to click a little tutorial, which I favorited, and it's going to start loading our model for us. And then you can see it's ready to go. It looks pretty good, actually. Well, maybe not the hat, but, you know, that's, again, up to personal preference. Whatever you want it to make it look good. 
I kind of just did it quickly just to demonstrate. I think caps look good, but some other stuff is a little bit weird. But uh, yeah, that that just about does it for the tutorial. Um, hopefully that was helpful, and uh, hopefully you will have an easier time getting your model into Tower Unite. So uh, if it helped, uh, you know, just let me know. If it didn't help, just let me know. If you have any questions at all, I highly recommend that you join the Tower Unite Discord server and come into the workshop channel. Um, there's a lot of people there willing to help you uh, if you run into any problems, and I really recommend that uh, instead of like leaving a comment or anything. You can feel free to do that as well. But if you have any uh, questions that you need answered, definitely, definitely, definitely join the Tower Unite Discord server and we should be able to help you out. Alright, with that said and done, that's the end of the tutorial, so uh, thank you guys, and uh, have a good one!